Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here he is. Rain Gad, live and direct. My brother, how you feeling? Thank you for coming on the on the Big Mountain Dub Club. Thank you, King. Um, I'm, I'm honored. How's, uh, how's everything? Anything to report over there in Accra? Accra is cool and <laughs> hot like caliente. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're getting your... You're Spanish ready, man, to vis come visit me in Mexico. <laughs> everything good, everything good. Um, we, are, we are coping with the corona and uh, uh, restrictions. Yes. Everything good. Yeah. Good, man. Good, good, good to hear. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your tra trajectory. I know uh, some Big Mountain fans are familiar with our collaboration, Angelina. Yeah. Um, yeah. But of course, uh, you know, not a lot of them know that I flew to Ghana to uh, record that with you. Um, but uh, before Big Mountain uh, collaborated with uh, Rain Ged, uh, you had already uh, gotten started with your career. And yeah. can you give um, Big Mountain people a little bit of an understanding behind Afrobeat and uh, your style of music, how it compares with uh, reggae music, if it does, um, and how, how, how the music is kind of fusing over there in Africa. Well, um, we, we were born into um, high life, High life and Afrobeat, you know, but we we import reggae and uh, you know the foreign stuffs. And um, I, as as an artist, as one artist, focus more on the message. I focus more on the message, but um, what is paramount in Africa? and in um, Ghana is high life and Afrobeat. But we have a lot of youth nowadays who are um, taking the dancehall and reggae thing, you know, mm -hmm. and actually, and, 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 and doing it really well. Um, my style, I do Afrobeat, I do reggae and dancehall. And um, I don't know. I'll say I, I grew up actually listening to you, Big Mountain, listening to uh, Senzo, um, Bob Marley. Um, when it comes to reggae, when it comes to reggae, Shaggy, and I say those are the influences, you know. And I use those influences in my music and I don't forget my roots. So I add the Afrobeat, I add um, the highlight. So I, 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 I have my own style like that. So when you can I, feel. When I was in, uh, feel, no, go ahead, finish, uh -huh. finish. You can feel some reggae vibe on an Afrobeat. You can feel Afro on a reggae thing. Right. So, well, it, it, it's more about the message for me. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. And uh, and you're good at that. I I, I love uh, the way you set up your songs. Your the conceptually. Um. And uh, the, the the your storytelling is very logical and uh, and <laughs> easy you. to understand if you can, you know, if you can understand the words. Which it sometimes for me it's a little challenging. I have to rewind and listen again and go and you know and and uh, why but, why why? Well, just be, <laughs> just because of the accent, Sounds man. I, I, I still yeah, I still have trouble with patois. I mean, I've been listening to reggae music since I was like 13 years old, and I still have to rewind and listen and rewind and listen. It's just, uh, I think it, I don't know what it is about about me. My brother James, on the other hand, that guy, he, like, you know, he lived in Hawaii for a long time, so he's used mm. to, to listening to kind of Creole, uh, <laughs> Pigeon, um, uh, what do you call it? Adaptations to to English. For some okay. reason, man, it always gets me. 
Um, but what was I going to ask you? Okay, when I was in Accra, I remember mm-hmm. listening on the radio. We spent a lot of time listening to the radio, which was cool. Um, mm-hmm. But there was some resistance to young artists like you incorporating reggae and dancehall into their music. There was some older high life artist, gentleman, I remember him expressing uh, some, you know, resistance to kids not focusing more on indigenous styles like like high life. Do, do, you, do you get that from older generational music, uh, musicians? Well, um, it, it, it is not a new thing. We, we, we get it, but you know, if we grow up listening to Bob Marley, you know, you, you become what you listen to. I, I, grew up lis- I, I grew up listening to Shaggy. Why am I listening to Shaggy? You know, if, if, if I listen to Shaggy at the point, I will be sounding like Shaggy, you know? So, I, 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 they, they are right in their sense. We are also right in our sense. But again, I say the message is the most important thing. So if I'm, if I'm singing even some Indian stuff and the message is cool, what are you saying? That's what I love about you, man, is that uh, you're, you, you're so sharp. And you're right. <laughs> um, we are a product of what we listen to, right? Um, I grew up in a Mexican-American household. Um, but my father, my, the man that raised me was African-American. Um, but, but I'm half Anglo, right? Um, and, uh, and that part of my family was also very important to me. You know, my, my aunt and my cousins, I hung out with them a lot. And, uh, but I ended up singing reggae music, right? You know, I had all of these other influences, um, around me, uh, uh, Mexican and black, uh, R&B and blues and jazz, my dad was really into um, jazz, but uh, I I listened to Bob Marley and I never turned back, man. Um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how reggae is perceived. You know, when I was on tour, uh, reggae sunsplash. Um, every tour back then had its African component, which was beautiful about the early days of reggae music it was all kind of like world beat we were all thrown into one lot right so Mm -hmm. they always um would package together groups like um thomas mapfumo um like uh, king sunny ade um uh fela i got to see fela twice man i consider it one of the greatest treasures of my life um and, and this and this was all because of our Dear sister and mentor, my mentor, Makeda Dread, which, you know, I... I Salute. <laughs> Big love, mama. You know, I mean, she was amazing, man, because she, she would bring all of this music through town, right? And somehow she would make it happen. The late 70s, early 80s were wow. beautiful for that. Um, wow. And then when I got to tour Reggae Sunsplash, that was already kind of set in stone. So I got to tour with Majek Fashek. Um, I got to tour, um, oh my goodness, why am I forgetting? Well, Lucky Dubé, but uh, he was more more reggae artist. I know that there was one more artist that uh, I'm forgetting right now that I got to tour with. It, it, It was really, really, really great to see. But there was also always a little bit of tension going on because I think, you know, uh, at that point, Jamaica was this, gl- or reggae music was this glowing thing that everybody kind of just bowed down to and said, oh my God, Bob Marley, reggae, this is the new, the, the new testament to music in the world, right? <laughs> but... The Jamaica, the African musicians and artists always kind of came on with this air that, well, reggae comes from Africa too. And we play beats, you know, with our drums that are exactly like every single reggae beat that you can come up with. We already have a variation of that style 
in our drumming, right? Yeah. So there was always a little tension going on about about that, and and um, just I guess that I guess what I'm trying to say is, do Africans have a little bit of a superiority complex when it comes to music? It took me a long time to say that, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm 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 very young, and uh, you know, some things. This I think this is business stuff. <laughs> you know, this is the to 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 the fans to the. Um, I would say I just left the crowd, and I'm moving to the backstage. So this is like backstage stuff. But to people who listen to the music, reggae is big and reggae is well accepted in Africa. But backstage, when it comes to the business stuff, there can be some tension that I'm yet to see. You know, I, right. I, I, I can't really speak on that. But we love reggae. It is accepted. You know, I think reggae... Um, 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 how do I say it? It is, um, the music is surviving. It, 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 it survives. So you, you see some of our music just come and die, but even reggae, reggae is still here. So mm. yeah, it is well accepted. But when it comes to the business, maybe there are some fights. <laughs> but musically also, I'm not going to let you get off mm -hmm. that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but musically African reggae has a complexity to it that you don't hear anywhere else right I mean it's just like our song Angelina which is one of my favorite yeah. songs I'm so proud of that song the production um, yeah Hasty Baba, Baba. <laughs> uh, yes Hasty my brother this is Kino just laying it on the line. I love that production. It just makes me so proud. And that you mixed it, right? I mean, that mix is just so pretty and so clean. And uh, yeah. But what I hear is these melody lines yeah. that are so rhythmically tight coming in and so gracefully. There's mm -hmm. so much going on. You don't hear the track. Like, if you just listen to the track, you go, oh, God, that's just a perfect sweet little reggae track but then the more you listen to it you're hearing all of this complex stuff happening yeah. in the back that Rich. that is different for reggae you know reggae mm -hmm. reggae that comes from the americas uh has a um stiffness about it um mm -hmm. that uh that you know and maybe I, I shouldn't be saying it like that okay reggae that comes from california <laughs> has a stiffness about it that I that I recognize right um uh -huh. but you know but the more reggae kind of moved away from dance I mean from the one drop beat it got stiffer and stiffer right and now now it seems like it seems like a lot of Jamaican artists are really kind of looking towards Africa as the new frontier maybe dance hall kind of hit a ceiling uh, a ceiling of creativity man but anyway now now I'm now I'm getting off topic Listen, mm -hmm. we got what much more to explore, bro. Okay, uh -huh. I want you, yeah. I want you to be a regular uh, presence on the Dub Club. I love talking to you. You always got just deep, heavy things to say, man. And and thank you, <laughs> thank you for coming on and and blessing yeah, me, man, my brother. You know how much I love you, man. I love you too, King. All right. I love you too. So give my give my love to all the brethren over there, and the sistren that were taking care sure. of us. Sure. And uh, <laughs> stay stay very strong, huh? All right, King. Peace. <laughs> love. <laughs>